legit could have been four different videos, but I'm squeezing it into one. We got a mini living room makeover. We've got a dresser DIY, a Lucite table DIY, and a copper pipe bench. What's up guys? Welcome to my channel. My name is Orly. For those of you that are not new, thoughts? Thoughts on my hair? I literally just got my hair done for the first time in 12 months. It's a little blonder than I intended. It's been a while since I've been in a salon, so I'm very excited. I am stoked. This is gonna be such a good video. So we're gonna be doing a mini living room makeover where I'm gonna show you how literally over the course of a weekend, for very little money, you can totally flip your space into something that feels brand new and totally fresh. I'm gonna show you how I did it, the different elements that I interjected so that it's not about buying all new furniture. It's just about using certain accessories that transform the space. And we're also gonna have three separate furniture DIYs, all of which are living in my space right now and I absolutely love. I'm gonna show you how to make over a dresser from this sort of old drab cherry wood, which I did not love, into this really cool mid-century modern cane webbing and black. It's super bold and super cool. I'm also gonna show you how to make this Lucite table, which is a really great piece that can go anywhere in your house and fully customizable, regardless of the style of your home. And then lastly, I'm going to show you how to make a copper pipe bench with true copper pipes. You can just buy at the hardware store. It's really fun. These are awesome pieces. These are all DIYs that I did on Home and Family, which is on the Hallmark channel. It's the TV show that I'm on. And so I kind of chopped up the DIYs a little bit to show you just what's necessary and also included kind of some like BTS footage so you could see what it's like to actually make the show. Um, so let's get right into it. I'm so stoked. This is the dresser I originally planned on transforming into the cane webbing dresser. It was like super cheap, 50 bucks, flat, simple drawers. I thought I could do something like this. So I had the dresser picked up and brought to set. Okay, so that dresser that I was telling you guys about arrived. I think what I'm gonna do is paint the outer shell, maybe like navy blue or black, and then do the front neutral. That was a suggestion from one of you guys. Turns out you get what you pay for. Because it was so cheap, as I was cutting it out, it got like all shredded. So I ended up grabbing this one, uh, which was also super inexpensive, but solid wood. And I thought I could transform it into something like this. Black with cane webbing, it's super expensive. You can see that one was 13,000. This one is 1,300. First thing I had to do was learn how to use a jigsaw. If you've never used one, it is so simple to use. You can rent them at Home Depot. You literally just like follow your line. I learned how to work on the curves. It was super simple. Then we do what's called a pre-tape. This is when we have to film something that is too long to do in the actual show. So we film it in advance. This is gonna see me actually working on it and you'll see how that gets fit into the show. All right, we are shooting the dresser makeover. It's official. Okay. okay. There's Debola. Next time. There's no business. <laughs> Please do it. Don't quit. Don't quit. There's no business. <laughs> Welcome back, everybody. Orly is here. He's gonna show us how we can transform a classic piece of furniture into a new modern favorite. We're gonna be using cane webbing, which you can actually buy, readily available. Yeah. You can find it online at a ton of different stores. Now, the thing that's so crazy about cane webbing is it is such a huge trend again that literally within seconds, it adds thousands of dollars to the price tag of whatever you're searching for. It's insanity. You'll type in like wood credenza and you'll find things within a range. You type in wood cane webbing credenza and just watch the zeros add up. You can do this with an old cabinet that you have or you can find one that you're gonna transform, whatever you want. All that you need is some of your cane webbing. You're gonna need a staple gun to actually apply it. Okay. If you want to stain yours, which I'll show how, you're gonna need a nice light wood stain and then you are gonna need a jigsaw. Now, when you're thinking about the dimensions of how to cut it. What you need to do is sort of default to the the widest point that would allow structural integrity. So for example, okay. here you can see this little hardware. Uh, this, I can't cut into the hardware, obviously, or I'm not able to open and close the drawers. So I measured this width, and that's now my default for every other cabinet. Even if I could cut this smaller, I want them to match. I'm gonna show you how to do it on a piece of plywood. This is just like my cabinet. Again, I said it was about two inches was the dimensions that I was able to cut while maintaining the structural integrity. So all I'm doing is plotting two inches across, lining up my ruler and connecting those lines until I have a rectangle that's a two inch border. Now you just need something round to create the oval sort of edges, that rounded rectangular shape. You can use a soda can, anything you want, something round. Now I've got my outline and I need four pilot holes. This is gonna allow my jigsaw to go in. I'm cutting all my straightaways with one blade and then using a smaller blade for my rounded edges because it's a little easier to move. 
A lot of cabinets are gonna get chips when you cut them if they're not solid wood, which many are not. So you need to sand it down, then put a little wood putty and soften that as well. Now here is my original cabinet. You can see I've already cut it out. I'm gonna be covering my hardware with some tape so that I can paint it. If you have round hardware like mine, that's all you're gonna do. Lay it down and use an X-Acto knife to cut it, and then you're gonna paint it. You wanna make sure to paint the inside as well. That thick sort of offset border, you wanna make sure to paint on the inside. There's, of course, a very wow. cool opportunity to do a pop of color on the inside if you want, but that has to get painted. You can't leave that raw. Okay, so now yeah. we are gonna actually put the caning on, which also is pretty simple. You wanna look at the lines, right? There's a very particular pattern. Straight lines up and down. You wanna think of where they are so that they line up straight from the outside. Now, I'm basically gonna use my arms to hold this down, and I'm just gonna put one staple <laughs> this right is where it would be really helpful if you had somebody to help you yeah, out, right? Yeah, exactly, but for right now, this is fine. I'm gonna put that there, and I'm gonna make sure I'm nice and straight, and I'm gonna line it up. I'm gonna do one more right down here, just to anchor it, again, making sure my lines are straight. And this is not an absolute necessity, but this is a cool tool. This is actually a canvas puller. You could use a clamp of some sort, but what oh. you can do is I can now grab it, since I'm doing it just one with one person, and if I hang it off the edge, look, when I pull down, look how nice and tight I can make it. Oh, that's great. Because you really wanna ensure that you're making it super tight so that it's not wobbly. Obviously, I want it to be much tighter than that, but for right now, it's fine, and we would cut that excess off. Okay. Now, look at the difference between the color here. Do you see how much lighter that is? Yeah. I personally really like the look of the warmer tone because it feels more vintage yeah, to me, which really makes it feel it. like it was a really Authentic. good find. Yeah. So what you're gonna do is take a nice light coat. You don't want a lot, just a light coat, sort of dip it in and pull off some of the excess and you're gonna buff. So go in and then like buff, buff, buff. Oh, oh my gosh, look at that. And That's you can so get in the corners there. So on some of them, I did it before, and on the others, I did it after. Either way is gonna totally what? work. Oh my gosh, you did a I great did it. job. This you is so amazing. Listen, if I can do it, anybody can do it. Look at that. You wanna put that in so we can see the end of it? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Look at that. That's perfect. Ta-da! Ta -da! I love it. Okay, the dresser is done. Let's move on to these really cool copper pipe benches. I gotta tell you, you look at it, it looks like it's gonna be complicated, but this is such a simple DIY. All of you watching at home can do it. Ours is 20 inches long by 14 inches wide. Nice. So we need four 20 inch length pipes, and okay. that's gonna create all of the length. All the long ones that you see are all 20 inches. So that's one right guys. here. There's inches. one that you can't see that's di directly underneath the seat. That's why you can't see the fourth one. Gotcha. Exactly. Okay, good. Exactly. And then these guys right here are five and a half inches. Okay. So here's our other and these little T's and the little curved ones. We have eight of each and that's how it's all going to come together. Gotcha. It really is, as you described Tinker Toys, it really is just like that. Okay. I want to explain some of these measurements. So our stool is 20 inches wide. So that's why the two foot stools on either end are 20 inches plus the bottom bar that goes across the bottom and the one that goes underneath the seat, which you can't see. Then it's also 20 inches tall. So you can see I have an 11 inch bar connected to a six inch bar with a T bracket. The T bracket is what allows us to have that footstool going across the center. And the little elbows and the T's are each an inch, which is what gives us that 20 inch top. Same for our width, how deep it is. Five and a half plus five and a half plus about an inch for each of the brackets gives us a 14 inch depth. We're gonna use a little bit of Gorilla Glue here. You don't need a ton, and you're just gonna apply a little bit to one part of the pipe. So you can okay. see I just have a nice droplet on one side there, yep. but now when we put the T-bracket on, you just kinda wanna rotate it around, and that's gonna get it everywhere, making sure that it's got that glue evenly. Excellent. So we're not gonna do that as we're going here, because it would take quite a bit of time, but right. do this for every step. Okay, and so am I doing this? Yeah, you're gonna put these two guys okay, in here. Good. Now, one of the reasons why you actually do wanna put the glue and start building it, yep. Put these two going like this. Yes, I is will. because you want to make sure that these are all in the right angle. So by building it, it forces everything to be perfectly supported. That's a great point. Now we're okay. gonna take these guys. We're gonna pop these in just like this. You got it. Again, these are the pieces that dictate our height. Yeah. Get those in. That's we'll in there pretty good, by the it way. It is. So now I recommend popping these on first. Okay. So now we go one, just like that. By the way, you could like on? literally make this with the kids too. They would like love to do this with you. Well, there we, we talk go. about this it. This is in coming there. together in real time, right? I mean, this is not something that takes a tremendous amount of work. You just need to know your length. To cut the pipe into the, oh, to yeah, the correct yeah. lengths and stuff, you get these real, oh, sorry, I'm moving it around too much. These real simple little uh, pipe cutters, you just put it on, 
pinch and twist. It's amazing. So now we are attaching it to our base and we're gonna use these little brackets. This is what is going to actually attach our upholstered seat to our new copper bench. Thank you. And these are the things that you use in plumbing. I mean, this is how you keep the pipes yeah. in place when you're actually plumbing. So it's fantastic that you're literally using all of the same same things that you would if you were laying pipe. This Precisely. is cool. These two are strong enough to hold the entire thing. Boom. Put everything in place. Yeah. Normally this would be glued. It's not glued and it's still super, super sturdy. And I mean. Super impressive. I gotta tell you. I, I love it. All right, and last up, I'm gonna show you guys how to do these Lucite tables. They are so cool and so glamorous. They make for a cute little bar or a vanity, anything. They're so awesome. It's very simple. So this is a tray that I got at the container store. It's just an acrylic serving tray. Amazing. And you wanna put it right side up just to mark where your legs are gonna go. You okay. see that's a quarter inch thickness on the tray. And that quarter inch is gonna push our legs in one quarter inch from the edge, which is exactly what we want so that from the side, you don't actually see the oh. hardware um, sticking out the side. So I've just taken a Sharpie and I've marked where my legs are gonna go and now I'm going to take my drill and I'm drilling through it now when you drill acrylic you want to start off kind of slow and slowly go faster and faster and faster as you go otherwise it cracks otherwise it can yeah. crack exactly and it's also really important that the tray is only just as far off the table as is needed you don't want to push it off because you don't want to be pushing too hard so sure. what you want to do is take your legs and we're gonna line it up and obviously, because we marked it, they line up just perfectly. So make sure you take a second so that they're all lined up. And now we're going to slide this down a little so I have access. So you can work underneath. So I just want to show here, we've got a bolt, and I decided to match my legs. So I've got a gold bolt. And this right here is a decorative washer. It's going to create a really nice, clean finish on the, uh, the top side, which is obviously what we're going to see. Right, so right. you push it through, and then you just take a nut and tighten it around. This you can do with your hand in the beginning. And then once everything is on, then you're going to want to go in there with probably like either pliers or sure. to really get in there and tighten, tighten it, it up a because bit. this is what's holding it all into place. There you go. Okay, so that's the end of all the DIYs. So now I'm gonna show you guys a little bit about what my space looked like before. Really, it was just a couple of different tweaks that I made as far as styling is concerned. And then I'll show you the couple of elements that I swapped out in order to make this more mid-century modern dresser work with the big furniture pieces that I already owned. It's super simple. It's something that you guys can do. So that's it. So this is the TV stand before. I really liked it, but this thing has gotten beaten up. More recently, we added curtains and I felt like everything started looking a little bit like drab. Like everything was all too much in the same tone. That lamp started to look kind of like old lady to me. Everything just looked like heavy. I wanted some lightness, something that felt a little bit more modern and newer colors. And so I took this basic setup and gave myself a little mini mid-century modern makeover. Even though some of the colors of these furnitures are bolder and darker, somehow they look lighter because they're raised off the ground. That's a reason why these copper pipe stools worked really well. I saved them after I did the project, but I just couldn't fit them in my house. But next to this credenza, which again is raised off the floor in these peg legs, they worked really well. I went and got some like natural elements that I thought would tie in with the cane webbing on the front of the dresser. You can always stack up some books and candles to bring in warmer tones that are throughout the rest of the space. Now, this little nook here, I knew that I needed a new lamp. That old lamp just felt really outdated to me and sort of like too traditional. So this big oversized globe I found at the flea market right on top of my acrylic table. It just looks cool. It like floats in the space and reflects light. And these pillows that I did are those really bold patterns that not only tie in the dark tones from the credenza, but they also bring in some of those mid-century modern patterns and color tones. So this whole little nook started to feel mid-century modern as well. Now, I don't know if I'm gonna keep it like this. I do love it, but I just think it's really fun to show how with very little money and very little effort, you really can transform your space into something that feels brand new. I hope you guys liked this one. I will see you next Friday for a brand new DIY. Bye.